Although the gang war in Jacksonville, Florida has seen the fall of many names, some names have thrived among the survivors in the streets. One of those names is ATK Scotty, rumored to be the deadliest shooter among Youngin Ace's soldiers. In this video, I will delve into the story of this allegedly ruthless character like you have never seen before. Stay tuned as I break down the facts, myths, and rumors about ATK Scotty. Who is ATK Scotty? Despite not being a rapper, the name ATK Scotty has been quite prominent in the ongoing bloody war between two of the most dangerous gangs in Jacksonville, Florida. ATK, Ace's top killers, and KTA kill them all. While the members of both gangs have been killing their rivals in their songs, Scotty, with no time to rhyme, is rumored to be killing their rivals in real life. Although his real name is Leroy Whitaker, this deadly shooter is more well known by the aliases ATK Scotty, Scotty Pippen, or Scotty 33. While much is not known about him besides the rumors, here is some information we can glean just from his nickname. Leroy got his nickname from a basketball player of the same name, Scotty Maurice Pippen Sr. The basketballer played alongside Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird in his prime and had the number 33 on his jersey. It's common knowledge in the hood that when someone is nicknamed after a basketball player, it means they are a shooter. It's a play on the word shooting, a skill in basketball and literally gunning people down. So, the ATK Scotty got his nickname for being a real shooter. Although this nickname also provides two important pieces of information about Scotty that many people miss. If you think about it, Scotty Pippen the player wasn't the best shooter during his time or ever. If ATK Scotty got his name just for being a shooter, it would have been better to call him ATK Steph or ATK Thompson. However, ATK Scotty has two other similarities to the player he was nicknamed after. The real Scotty Pippen was a great defender one of the greatest in NBA history. This is similar to ATK Scotty's role in his gang because rumors claim that ATK Scotty is always ready to take down anybody who might be a threat to them. Another similarity is that Scotty Pippen is considered Michael Jordan's sidekick for most of his career. Just like Michael Jordan was the captain of his team, Youngin Ace is the leader of Ace's top killers and ATK Scotty can be considered his sidekick. To properly fulfill his role, ATK Scotty chose to forfeit the spotlight for the rappers in the gang while he takes care of eliminating threats and rivals. He doesn't chase clout, appear in music videos, or post countless pictures of himself on social media, yet he's quite famous as a prominent player in the ongoing gang war. His reputation precedes him. In fact, we might call him the bogeyman of the Jacksonville gang war because not even ATK's most disrespectful rival has dared to diss ATK Scotty in a song. On the contrary, his allies have praised him several times for being a ruthless shooter and a good one at that. In a song titled Ben Dead, Xu raps about how Scotty saved his life with his shooting skills. Should've killed me in Waycross. They hopped out with them K's. Me and Scotty busting back, we was on the same page. This was right after ATK's rival gang tried to assassinate Xu. If Xu had been alone, perhaps, they would have gunned him down. But Scotty's presence saved Xu that day, as the two of them were able to prove to their rivals that they could never be caught lacking. In another track titled Dead Ops 6S by Xu and ATK YBZ, the two rappers spilled some info about ATK Scotty that gave more insight into his ruthlessness. Xu rapped, they left Jimbo outside like they did that eight. Who's that? Chase his down, eat that face. Call 33, call that Pippin boy he liked to chase. Sharpshooters like KD will pull up in your face. Here, Xu referred to ATK Scotty by his other aliases 33 and Pippin, saying that Scotty enjoyed chasing his victims. True to this, there have been stories of Scotty chasing his victims before gunning them down. I'll talk about some of these stories later in this video. Ibizi also rapped in his verse, 33 don't need no mask, bare face, run down, get on your Take one time, you know I'm a spaz. Have them killers outside laid up in your grass. Once again, there have been stories to support this claim that Scotty doesn't cover his face with a mask when carrying out an operation. This is most likely because the target will be either dead for sure or would be left too terrified to report him. However, these are not the only times we've gotten insight into how deadly ATK Scotty can be. In a rare moment of unexpected honesty, Scotty made a shocking confession on his now deleted Twitter page where he said, can't count on my fingers how many I done whack. This unexpected confession reveals that Scotty has killed no less than 10 people, likely way more than that. It gets even more shocking when you realize he was just 18 years old at the time of the tweet. Scotty was eventually arrested in 2020 in connection to a broad daylight murder, which I will also tell you more about later. The case has been in court for some years now without a verdict yet and Scotty is still in custody. However, the interrogation videos and other updates about him reveal that he remains the same deadly shooter heard about on the streets of Jacksonville. In a trending interrogation video released sometime last year, Scotty was recorded singing the lyrics to King Von's song Rolling while waiting for the interrogation to begin. I live, uh, I live, uh, 
The specific lyrics Scotty chose to sing despite knowing he was on camera were, I just need a bad hoe, I don't need no mad hoe, pop so many that my nickname should be Rambo. This simply goes to show that Scotty didn't care about his current situation. It was obvious that someone like this wouldn't crack under the pressure of the interrogation or give the police any useful information. And that was exactly what happened. As a testament to Scotty being a ruthless killer, despite being in jail, he recently got new charges for possession of a deadly weapon in jail. Now let's go all the way back to the genesis of this whole story and see how ATK Scotty became one of the deadliest shooters in Jacksonville, Florida. ATK Vuzz KTA. This whole Jacksonville beef would probably not exist without these two main characters, Young Jean Ace and Julio Fulio. Young Jean Ace is to ATK Scotty what Michael Jordan is to Scotty Pippen. Young Jean Ace is the captain, the star, while ATK Scotty is the right hand man and the shadow behind the light. While Scotty has chosen to keep off the spotlight, Young Jean Ace lives comfortably in it. He came up from the streets as a rapper, rapping about real life scenarios and the hard life he's had to endure. Ace was raised by his single mom alongside 11 brothers, but he was an eagle that knew he had to soar, so he left home at a young age to hustle for a better life. Rather than being a victim of the circumstances he found himself in, Ace chose to rap about it, and in 2017, his rap career took off. Since the streets were too tough to survive alone, Yungin Ace teamed up with several gangs before eventually starting his own called ATK, short for Ace's Top Killers. However, Yungin Ace wasn't the only budding rapper from Jacksonville who attracted lots of attention in the rap scene. On the other side of town from him was Julio Fulio. Just like Ace, Fulio has had a really tough life, maybe even tougher, as he was surrounded by murders right from childhood. His father was murdered, his uncle was murdered, and before he was 20, over 15 of his friends had been murdered. Puberty for Fulio came with a murder attempt as he was shot multiple times at a tender age of 15. According to Fulio, he bought his first gun in seventh grade because he already had beef with deadly rivals by then. Fulio also started his own gang called Six Block, named after his hood. They eventually merged with some other gangs and became KTA, short for Kill Them All. From their story, you can tell that beef in Jacksonville, Florida is totally different from the ongoing Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef. In Jacksonville, Florida, a beef meant you could be gunned down by your rivals at any time, so it was crucial to have a gun and always be alert. The worst part is that the beef never ends with a rival's death. Instead, it leads to bad blood and an unquenchable thirst for revenge. And that was exactly what happened between ATK and KTA. Nobody can tell exactly when and how their beef started. Not even Yungin Ace or Julio Fulio, the major players of the gangs. Before the now bloody war between the two groups, many members of the gangs were affiliated with each other at some point. While Fulio and Ace never met in person, they both shared mutual friends. One of Fulio's followers was Ace's cousin, and one of Ace's closest friends, Xu, was once Fulio's follower. As both ATK and KTA grew in numbers and influence, it was inevitable that the two would clash at some point. Many believed that the ongoing war between them was born from a mere misunderstanding. However, nobody really knows the full details. The most popular opinion is that it all began with the death of one man, Zion Brown. The murder of Zion Brown. Zion Brown was a member of PCE, Problem Child Entertainment. PCE was a ruthless gang that committed a crime that attracted a RICO charge against them. PCE had beef with another gang called 187 Boys, now known as 1200. These were the two gang that started a fight at Kodak Black's concert in November 2015. Some members of PCE tried to assassinate one of their rivals in a drive-by, but this led to the death of several innocent people, including a 22-month-old baby. This was the crime that led to the RICO charge against PCE, and the gang was disbanded. However, this was not enough to dispel the feud between PCE and their rivals. And one such rival is Trey Shorty. Fast forward to a couple of years later, Trey Shorty, a friend of Yungin Ace, decided it was an auspicious day to kill his rival, Zion Brown. He went to Zion's house that night after texting a friend of his intentions, broke into the house with a brick, then proceeded to rain bullets on his target and his two sisters. Trey Shorty was apprehended for Zion's murder because Zion was smart enough to name his killer just before he gave up the ghost. The investigators believed, however, that Trey Shorty was not alone at Zion's house on the night of the murder. They said someone was sitting on the couch watching the murder show. A popular rumor on the street is that the anonymous figure was none other than Yungin Ace himself. While this is merely a rumor and cannot be confirmed, one actual fact is that the victim on that night, Zion Brown, is Julio Fulio's blood cousin, and they were quite close. Body count. The resulting war between ATK and KTA has claimed so many lives, it's a surprise the human race is not yet extinct in Jacksonville. This war has seen the rise and fall of many names, some gang members, some innocent. So much shooting has gone down that even the murder rate in Jacksonville shot up. Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, JSO, has undoubtedly gotten more work on their hands than they signed up for as many of these murders remain unaccounted for. The only people reaping from this are most likely the arms dealers because these gang members keep spraying bullets like it's cheap perfume. Now it's 
impossible for me to cover all the murders that have gone down in Jacksonville due to this war, but in this video, I'll discuss the most relevant and well-known cases. After losing his beloved cousin to a rival gang, Julio Fulio was not going to let this slide, especially since there was a rumor that Yungin Ace was present at the crime scene. Just like I mentioned earlier, a rival's death only attracts more bad blood and an unquenchable thirst for revenge. After receiving news of Zion Brown's murder, Fulio was thirsty for revenge. He went out for blood. Ace retaliated, and everything escalated. When I say Julio Fulio and Young Jean Ace, I mean the entire ATK and KTA because these two leaders are not carrying out the hits themselves. They have workers for that. And while the gang members are mostly teenagers, they're all killers, and they're all ruthless. Fulio allegedly ordered a hit on Young Jean Ace. During this period, Ace revealed in an interview that his mom's house was shot up while she was home. This is be my room right here. One boy shot my house up. I was right there on the bed, me and my little brother Quan Quan. And then shot my house up from right here. This is my mama right here. They shot my mama house up. They shot this part right here. My mama was in the room, they shot that. Thankfully, his mom did not die from that incident, but luck would not always smile at Ace as he was involved in a shootout that claimed the lives of his brother and two friends later that year. One of Ace's closest friends, 23, was celebrating his birthday on that fateful day. So Yungin Ace, his brother Quan Quan, and another friend, 4, went out to eat and celebrate with the birthday boy, 23. They posted videos and pictures on social media as they were going to enjoy themselves, but little did they know that their rivals were stalking and waiting for the right time to strike. Right after the merriment, Yungin Ace and his friends were ambushed by another car that dumped countless bullets on them. Unfortunately, Quan Quan, 23 and 4, died on the spot, while Yungin Ace alone survived with multiple gunshot wounds. After this devastating loss, Julio Fulio jumped on social media to troll his rivals. He wore a t-shirt with a picture of one of the victims on it, and a caption that read, Rest in He took it further when he released the track, that, where he trolled Yungin Ace about the shooting. Fulio rapped, oh, you a demon? Well, that chopper turned his whole team to angel dust, could have killed a rapper, but Lil Ron the drill up. Ace is famous for calling himself a demon in his song, so Fulio was referring to him here as he mentioned the shooting incident. According to this rap, Fulio said Ace was only alive because someone, Lil Ron, messed up. He took it further by saying, I swear to God, we in the streets for real. You better ask how that Glock 23 feel. Some have interpreted the intentional pause as, you better ask 23 how that Glock 23 feel. 23 being Young Jean Ace's close friend who also died in that shooting. Being the ruthless killers they were, ATK wasn't going to let that slide. They desperately needed to even the score, especially since Fulio bragged in the same track. I'm like, F that. He know what it is. These is mad. We up like five bodies in the field. They finally got their chance because Fulio made a very big mistake in that same song as he gave away his address, daring his rivals to come for him. He rapped. And on the other end, I heard the whole city want to murder me. I'll drop my address. I'm on 1646 West 45th Street. The ATK crew took him up on his dare and decided to show just how deadly they could be. They pulled up at Fulio's house and shot the place up. Fulio's mom was shot eight times in his his sister got hit too, but the ATK demons were not going to stop until they sent someone to God. They got that chance shortly after at an East Side reunion where they killed a close friend of Fulio's named Trey D. According to word on the streets, Trey D was one of the deadliest shooters in the KTA crew. Even Fulio has praised him several times in his songs for killing so many people. So this was a big win for ATK and a huge loss for KTA. Of course, revenge shootouts occurred after that. Corbin Johnson, another gang-affiliated teenager, went missing during this period and Sue's brother other boss goon who had just been released from prison was a victim of this revenge quest although boss goon had a history of being in the streets his friends and family claimed he left all that behind to focus on a career as a rapper after his release unfortunately for him the kta gang blew him up before his career could blow up another revenge quest ensued on atk's side this time and they made a score when chu killed 16 year old bibby Xu and atk scotty allegedly pulled up on bibby and another kta member pop out Xu and scotty greeted their ops with their loud guns with no need for words Pop Out reportedly took to his heels while Bibby stood his ground, returning fire for fire until he got shot and tried to crawl away. While Scotty chased after Pop Out, Sue reportedly walked up to Bibby and shot him at the back of his head at point blank range. Sue rapped about the incident in several songs, including one notably titled Sue B Yet the police did not make an arrest for Bibby's death at the time. Fulio expressed how hurt he was when Bibby died in a song he titled Bibby Story to confirm that Bibby's death was just as devastating to Fulio as Ace was when he lost Quan Quan, 23 and 4. But 
But of course, the killings did not end there. KTA pulled up on Young Gene Ace and his crew at a hotel in Waycross. This was where Scotty demonstrated the excellent shooting skills that Sue rapped about in Been Dead. Should have killed me in Waycross. They hopped out with them K's. Me and Scotty busting back, we was on the same page. While Sue and Scotty survived the incident, they unfortunately lost another dear friend and member of the ATK crew named Rollo. In the same song, Sue mentioned the next person he killed as revenge for the Waycross shooting, Techie Shots. Techie Shots is another very close friend of Julio Fulio, who was not only a prominent member of the KTA, but also an aspiring rapper. Kasu rapped right after praising Scotty. I was mad as f I went up in a f***ing rage. I caught a f lacking at the store up his face. Now remember Zion Brown, Fulio's cousin whose death escalated this feud? Well, around this period, his sister was set to testify against her brother's murderer, Trey Shorty, since she was a witness and a victim of the shooting that night. However, just a day before she could make her court appearance, Zion Brown's sister was attacked by a member of the ATK crew and shot 14 times. Fortunately for her, she survived, but she also got the message and never tried to testify again. While ATK member EBZ was arrested for shooting Zion Brown's sister, her mother made a Facebook post post clarifying later that it was actually ATK Scotty who shot her daughter. Corbin Johnson, the teenager who went missing earlier, was also found around this time. Rather, his bones were found around this time. He had been murdered. Sometime after that, Sue's house got shot up while his mother was home. Fulio took to Instagram Live to troll Sue about the incident. When the ATK and KTA gang were not shooting at each other, they were dissing themselves on their songs and trolling the deaths on both sides. This is what led a young KTA rapper by the name of Lil Buck to make some disrespect respectful comments about boss goon, Ksu's brother. Ksu went out for blood and he got it. According to available evidence and eyewitness testimonies, Ksu murdered Lil Buck in broad daylight at a shopping center. This murder eventually led to the arrest of ATK Scotty Ksu and Ksu's father, because unfortunately for Ksu and his crew, the murder was witnessed by an off-duty cop. The policeman engaged Ksu in a high-speed chase before Ksu made a clean getaway on foot. Apparently, Ksu was not alone when he murdered Lil Buck. ATK Scotty and another member of the ATK crew, Dominique Barnes, was with him. After crashing their car while running from the police, Scotty and Dominique ran into a woman's house, stole her husband's clothes, and then called Q's dad to pick them up. The woman reported the incident immediately following their exit, and a team of forensic officers showed up at her house to find incriminating evidence. They found it after hours of searching. Scotty's DNA on the woman's pajamas. This led to Scotty's arrest and eventually every other person involved that day, including Sue's father. Despite the deadliest shooter, ATK Scotty and the demon of Jacksonville, Sue being locked up, the killings in the ATK versus KTA gang war has yet to reduce with one of the most prominent killings being the murder of Julio Fulio ATK Scotty, the shooter behind the scenes. Now, I know you're probably wondering what this whole feud has to do with ATK Scotty. Well, let's consider his confirmed involvement. By now, we know that Scotty was present at the murder of Bibby, the shooting at Waycross, the attempted murder of Zion Brown's sister, and the murder of Lil Buck. Doesn't this make you wonder about all the times ATK Scotty was not recognized or mentioned at a crime scene? After all, unlike the rest of his crew, he doesn't expose himself on a rap song, bragging about killing his opponents. Being away from the spotlight makes ATK Scotty the suitable man for most of the crimes committed by the ATK crew. In the few cases where his participation was confirmed, he demonstrated his ruthlessness and passion for shooting people. When Ksu murdered Bibby and Scotty chased Pop out, it was a confirmation of what Ksu said about him in Ben Dead, about how he loved to chase his victim. Who is that? Chase his ass down, eat that ass face. Call 33. Call that Pippin boy he liked to chase. During the shooting at Waycross, Scotty demonstrated fearlessness by standing his ground and shooting back at the enemy instead of hiding or running. The shooting that shut Zion Brown's sister's mouth also showed how ruthless Scotty is. Any other person would have shot her just once or twice, maybe three at most, but not Scotty. He shot her 14 times. He didn't even care that she was a lady. He shot her just as much as he would shoot a man. I guess we can say that Scotty is a feminist at heart, shooting men and women equally. So far while in prison, he hasn't broken yet or ratted out any member of his crew. This speaks volume of his mental toughness and unbreakable spirit. As I mentioned earlier in this video, he even caught a new charge for possessing a deadly weapon in jail. I guess this confirms that ATK Scotty is really as deadly as the rumors say he is. If you enjoyed this video, Video and would like to see something even more interesting, check out this video on your screen for back-to-back -back entertainment.